so it's 12 hours after our beloved Yorkie passed on February 12th, 2024. And I'm doing this video to show you how I'm, I've learned to feel the feelings and notice my thinking to help me live more fully in the present. We knew she was sick. We knew she was on her way out. But I gotta tell you, that didn't help at all. The logic of this situation didn't help me at all because I really loved her so much and wish that she could still be here. I miss her terribly. So here's, here's what I've been doing to try to help myself get through this and really honor her memory and all that she's meant to us. So, and also to show you the tools that I'm using because I have really found that when I use these tools, I feel life much more fully and, um, and I want to feel the love and loss because that honors her and all she gave to us. So here's what I've been doing. She passed and my lovely daughter was with her because she was very connected with her. And she stayed with her all night. And you know, the minute she passed, she came and found us. Cause that was her happy place. Daphne's happy place was on her bed. Cause they, um, we brought Daphne home when she was just a little under six years old. and. They just bonded right because um, it was, you know, Lana just spent a lot of time with her on the couch. And in fact, she remembered this morning that it, to credit Daphne for the reason why she got out of her room. Because when she first came home, we didn't know if we could trust her, you know, let us know when she needed to go outside. And so we had her stay, you know, with Alana on the couch. And Alana was out there for almost a year with a lot with Daphne for hours on end. So I did my best to, you know, to say, oh, I know you, you just did everything you could. What love you showed Daphne. So I'm trying to use the tool of validating the emotion with my, with everyone in my family and with myself. So After we all, we took care of her and and got her ready to go to the vet this morning, we all went back to our rooms and tried to sleep. Well, forget that. That didn't work at all last night. So I remember thinking at um, 2.45 or 2.44 this morning, an hour after she passed, just how much I missed her. And I was crying and, and I said, okay, if this is gonna happen, you, you need to really use the tools to feel the feelings so I could feel the constriction in my throat and the burning in my chest and the tears. And I did my best to feel, just really feel all that, even though it felt just awful. <sighs> but again, I was trying to use these tools to help me through this so that I did, that I really, really lived fully the legacy that she left us. Sorry about all the, anyway. And then, it, you know, I remember at some point, I don't know if it was like 3.45, I mean, I was just trying to make sure that I was aware and accepted all of my thinking, which was, wow, I was just amazed at how brave um, my daughter was and my son was and, we all were 
you know, just loving her to the very end. <sighs> and how lucky we were to be with her and help her cross that rainbow bridge. <sighs> with all the love in the world. So then it was about 4.44 and I was still awake, of course, and I thought, you know, I really just need to, again, feel the feeling, and I did, and the tears, and the throat, and the chest, and all that stuff happened again, and I said, you know, this is, this feeling, feeling stuff is really hard, and then I just said, okay, and let's see if we can't, you know, maybe listen to something that'll help you go to sleep, so I did listen to the Yoga Nidra from um, Russell uh, Kennedy to help try and get aware of my body, but and see if I could relax it, but it just wasn't working. So then I read and I felt, you know, maybe I read a little bit, but then I, I, I couldn't even do that. So then I said, let me write. So I started to write, um, you know, I went in and I wrote where I had been, where my, I had used my strengths that day. And I wrote down a three, two, one about what I wanted to do today. Um, and why this practice means so much to me and why I think it's really the way to help our graduates get prepared for life without us someday. So that centered me in my strengths and my purpose and I felt pretty good about that but still no sleep. <laughs> so I just kept writing, you know, thinking about my thoughts and I didn't write them down. I probably should have at that point because that probably would have helped me, you know, just at least note them on my phone. But then it became 6.45 and it was, I get up at 7, so it was time to get up. And I thought, oh, let me just take a deep breath and, you know, try to notice where my body is and just feel the feeling that's in there and recognize that it's clean pain that's happening because I really, really miss her. And I loved her so much. And all of us did. So, um, got up around seven, um, you know, got ready to take her to the vet and was just, again, so amazed at both my both my my graduates and how much they really held themselves um you know they really loved her they cried they they felt bad and they were able to just still do what needed to get done so i took her we took her in and met this wonderful vet tech who um helped us with the paperwork and then said that she would take a paw print and uh, make a cast of her paw for us what a lovely person who spoke to Daphne as if she were still alive. So I just noticed that my throat was so tight I couldn't even speak. I just was really trying to let it happen, not push it back or, or ignore it or dismiss it. This is hard. But I'm also learning such important lessons from this, and that is that, you know, this is really how to live. Because I'm living the 50 50, I'm living the beautiful parts, and I'm living the awful parts. And this is what I want my kids to be able to do, too. I want them to just get everything out of life. So I, needed, I need to lead the way. And I need to let them know that it's okay to cry and it's okay to feel all these feelings. And even when you don't get any sleep, you know, it's okay. You can make it through the day. And I was so proud because, you know, my my daughter works at, at the place, at the vet, and because it's part of PetSmart. And she decided to work today, which was really, she said, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to love being with these dogs. And I the strength that... I saw in her, I just so admired it. So I took her out for breakfast and then dropped her off at work. And and um, she made it through the day, P just picked her up. It's around, like I said, 1.45. And um, she made it through the day, though she has a really bad headache, which is totally understandable. But on the way home, I said, "How did you know, what's going on inside your body? She said, I just feel empty. 
And I said, oh, that makes so much sense. It's a big loss. I mean, we talked about, you know, and cried on the way home. I mean, I, I still drove, so I was safe. But, um, you know, it just was such an important time um, for me to validate what was going on for her. And she was just lovely. Though. She would give me hugs and my son would give me hugs and we all would give each other hugs. So I just wanted to share that it's really um, eye-opening for me how these tools are helping me to live life more fully and to lead my kids lead my graduates so that they do as well and just to let them know how much I value them and love them and how we will all we will just miss the heck out of that little fluffy soft amazingly sweet and extremely protected protective um Yorkshire Terrier that you know, so many parts of our day were defined by her. And so, you know, I really, really wish she could still be here, but know that she can't and that I, um, that we all will go on honoring her memory as best as we can. So that's my heartfelt message to you is to practice these tools because they just help us all come alive and really appreciate each other and and how good life really is when we're together bye for now